Hi, I'm Sam Candy. Welcome to Sustain Talks. Today I'm joined by Matt Holman, owner of Simpler Mental Health and a very good friend of mine who I've known for many years. Hi Matt, how are you? Hi Sam, I'm very well thank you. Lovely to see you. Yeah, well. lovely to see you too and good to have you here and it's uh, a good time to be talking about mental health I think. A um, lot less taboo to have the conversation and so why don't you tell us a little bit more about you and about how Simpler came to light. Okay, um, I'll do the brief, quick introduction because I know there's lots we want to talk about as well around this conversation of mental health. But sort of short story, 20 years plus in the corporate world, um, spent too many years doing too many bad habits, traveling and uh, excesses of travel, whether that was eating unhealthily, drinking too much or partying too hard. So I think the cumulative impact of that at some point just created this version of me that was difficult to recognize now. You know, I don't really see that in myself anymore. Um, but I had a moment of impact, I would call it, where I crashed in with my mental health. My mental health wasn't in a good place. Um, I got let go from a job and I struggled and I genuinely struggled with my own mental health. You know, at that point, I, I struggled with this single post-traumatic stress and it took a while to come back. You know, luckily, though, I did. And friends of mine helped me. But when I left that role and when I was in that place, I felt all those horrible associated things that come with mental illness, unfortunately. And I made two conscious choices at that point. First one was I would never work for anybody again. And thankfully, five and a half years later, I can say simply with my business and I work for myself. And secondly, was that whatever I did had to help other people. So that was sort of my driving force behind what I was doing. In that time since I started my business, we are a training business. We support organizations to understand how to work with mental health in the workplace, uh, well being in the workplace. I do conferences, events, I speak openly about my experiences of mental health, what I do and how I do it, and all the other things that are associated to it. I've got my own podcast, which was launched in November of 2020 during a pandemic and uh, talking to people about their journeys with mental health. And, and to date on this recording, we've recorded 100, 111 episodes actually has been recorded of that podcast in less than a year. And it's just been an incredible journey. Um, yeah. I was very honored as well to do a TEDx, TEDx talk back in October, 2019, Fantastic. talking about being a 24 hour human, which is a project or passion project of mine, all humans all day, every day. And a million other things that I've been involved with, launching a magazine called Happy Fall. I've been involved in lots of conversations around developing solutions for mental health and well-being. And I always go back to that one point of in January of 2015, uh, 2016, sorry, I lost my job suddenly without expecting it. And I never thought I'd be able to do anything ever again. And that is a reality that a lot of people, unfortunately, when they're struggling with their mental health challenges, they feel this is the case. You know, I'm worthless, hopeless, helpless and all those things. So... I'm very lucky. I really am. I'm also a parent. I'm also a husband, chief dog walker, um, all the different associated elements that come with living in a house with um, three girls, um, which is always fun. But, yeah. you know, most importantly, I help people to talk about mental health. And that's my job now. My yeah. job is simple. I don't have anything, which is why simpler was the name. You know, it's everything is too complex nowadays. We've got too many things, too many stimulants, too many worries, concerns, stresses. My business is built on the basis that says we engage and we encourage people. And for anybody that's listening to this, you won't see it. But behind it, there's a sign that says very clearly we need to talk about mental health. And that's what I've been doing for the last five and a half years. And I, and I love where I am with that conversation. So there we go. So brief introduction. Yeah. Hope you're right, Sam? No, that that's really great. You're doing so much good. And there are more of you needed. There really are. And, um, you know, especially when you think, you might not often recognize the signs. You're working for a corporate company and someone's going through something. How can you, are there ways that you can recognize if there are signs? Yeah, there, there always are. And I think, I think the thing is we need to learn to not only sort of look for the signs, but listen for the signs as well. The sounds, the behaviors, the, the things that people change, you know, in, in some of those sort of behaviors or things that they're doing is really important. One of the things that I train is mental health first aid. I train companies all the time around spotting those signs, being able to understand how to support people better. But it's actually basic stuff. We see it a lot. We see mental illness or not even mental illness, but mental health challenges all the time. People yeah. struggle, yet they're scared to say I'm struggling. 
people are worried about what's going on and you know think about burnout as an example so let's talk about that briefly you know I was reading an article just this morning around you know what companies will see is in the last 18 months for those that have been working you've seen very high performance often because people are fearful of their jobs right they're fearful of losing their jobs so high performance doesn't actually relate to positive mental health necessarily so you have to be mindful to that so what does burnout mean well burnout means people are performing more which means working more doing more hours to be successful so that on the face of it i protect my employment but the risk then is that you will see less satisfaction as the employees start to on pulse surveys or on other ways of measuring sort of satisfaction in the workplace will be more negative. So, so it's, it, it's, it's interesting when we start to break it down into the individual elements. We all have stress, right? We all have stress. Mm. It's how we manage our stress that's going to manifest itself into either a positive experience or a negative one. If yeah. The peril, it's going to get hard. Things are going to get difficult and the risks become much greater invest your time and energy in reducing your stress level do the things you love meet up with friends go to a party or a hen party go golfing for the weekend with your buddies it's important stuff that we need to make sure we're doing and when people stop doing it that's when we should also notice that people aren't living the best versions of their lives there's so many parts to it but yeah the, you can see physical signs you can see behavioral change you can see some of the emotions and the thoughts that people are sharing about how they feel about themselves and just listening to words if yeah. you talk negatively about the world around you, it's probably showing me already how you're feeling. Yeah, that's so true. Uh, over the last um, year and a half now, uh, a lot of people have been working from home. Do you think it's been harder for people, um, for companies to work with their staff, with their mental health with, when they're working remotely? Yeah, it's a, bit of an, it's a bit of an interesting one because I don't think we're 100% clear on the impact of that yet because mm -hmm. lots of people have really enjoyed it. I always talk two perspectives, right? So you always have to think, my perspective is I've enjoyed it, I've enjoyed being at home with my family and all the other associated positives that I can draw from that. But there's also a perspective of somebody that says, I hate it, I hate social isolation, I need to be around people, I can't be in this environment. So, so I think there's a, there's a huge amount to learn from this experience. Companies supporting people has been critical furlough unfortunately as much as it was about preventing the loss of jobs it didn't prevent this connection of people with their management and their teams because one of the big rules of course around that was stay at home don't do your job yeah. so people people felt disconnected from their organization so i think that will also have associated mental health impacts that we may you know we are starting to see i think some people are quite hesitant to go back to work because they haven't yeah. worked so long and it is almost like i've been in this, this this mode of inactivity for a prolonged period of time so 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 many different elements to it and i think the whole issue of how do we support people better and have we done a good job i think it has to be done or measured on an individual basis yeah how did your manager do for you for anybody that's listening how did you feel your manager supported you and you know i keep hearing all the time people go on these zoom calls they keep their cameras off and maybe they're struggling maybe they but why don't we just reach in and ask the questions? Why don't we understand why people don't want their cameras on? Some people don't want the cameras on because they got the kids in the background, the dogs, you know, running about or whatever it might be, or they their house isn't as tidy as they wish it was, or they didn't have the space for it. But we just have to learn to understand conversations help us to get to those points of are we doing a good job? What's going on? If we just keep ignoring it, it doesn't make it better, it makes it worse. Companies yeah. have been a lot in that. And there are some good examples out there with companies that have done very well with supporting their team and then there's obviously examples of people where companies haven't done so well supporting their teams and people feel disconnected so yeah big question yeah it really is. do you think that it is the company's responsibility to support you know if somebody chooses to work from home if they're given the choice do you think then that um it's down to the company to make sure they're remote working and their mental health while working from home is it their responsibility or is it the person's? I think it's a bit of both. I, I think, you know, the company has a duty of responsibility as an employee, you know, so yeah. this is one of my employees. I need to take care of them, whether they're working from home, from the office, from the moon, from anywhere, you know, it, it's still my responsibility. I think the challenge is with the home working environment is, is when are people working? 
are they working traditional nine to five hours or are they extending those hours? Because, you know, what, I would have spent an hour on the train in the morning, an hour in the evening, so I'll, I'll work those hours, which I just want to say very clearly to everybody, you never used to give that to your workplace when you were commuting into work. No. So why are you doing it now? So it, it's more about that doing more, isn't it? That doing more and that higher performance, which then leads to things like burnout. And and I, I yeah, you know, I think the responsibility of the individual is all about making sure you take breaks, making sure you step away from the computer, making sure you still do the things you enjoy. It's been enabled by, you know, of course, for a long time, we couldn't go to the gym, we couldn't meet our friends, we couldn't do the social things that as humans we need and we crave. But now that things have started to, you know, become less restricted, we can. And now you're seeing that slow return for people the cautious return and I know not everybody's the same of course but, but everybody's unique and individual to it so again <laughs> there's no conclusive answer or evidence that uh, says it's better at home it's better at work I know lots of people that want to go back to the office but they don't want to stay at home and you know it's, it's, yeah it's individual isn't it it's more of the sort of work from anywhere hybrid sort of model that's starting to show itself yeah I love working from home it's like completely completely changed my life my work balance and but I still I work for myself as well and I still I'll stop for lunch for about 30 minutes and then I'm like oh I better go back to work now and think no one's telling me but I've it's just been inbred in my head that you know you have a set time and it, it's it's hard to come out of that um within companies it's hard for people to have a conversation about mental health if they don't know how to have that. Is there is there a right way to discuss it? Is there a right way to bring it up if you suspect somebody is struggling a bit? Yeah, you know, I think there's there's a few myths that we need to dispel with some of this, I think, as well, is, you know, and, and, and some facts, really. You know, if you're not having that conversation with your with your person that you need to talk to or that person that's struggling, just remember they're probably not having a conversation with anybody so if you're seeing signs and not doing anything with it do something please do something doing something is better than doing nothing that's how i feel about all of this it's like yeah. conversation if we took it to that degree of when people are at risk of things like suicide you know people that's scaring you or worrying you or concerning you talk about it because it's the best thing you can do the worst thing you can do is walk away and do nothing and that unfortunately is what most of us would be doing so engage conversation is really straightforward but Having the ability to listen and be really clear in terms of what they're saying is really important because we're so good at trying to fix everybody's problems. We, we are conditioned as creatures to fix problems. The problem with that is when somebody's struggling with their mental health, you cannot fix that problem. You cannot find a solution that says, this is gonna fix you. I can Google everything and give you ideas but it's for you individually to take whatever it is that you find is the best solution and run with that. So go, you know, therapy, if you need therapy, is only for you to decide, not for me to tell you. The doctor, yeah. if you feel that I need to go see the GP, it's for you to decide, not for me to tell you. We're too quick to tell people what to do. It's life, it's normal. We do it all the time with technology and different things that we offer, you know, and we give to people all the time. The thing we forget is that we don't really know if they need what we're suggesting. Yeah. It's for them to define. So if you're talking to anybody, for those people out there, if you're talking to somebody about their mental health, listen first. Listen and seek to understand, get them to use their words as to what's going on. Obviously, creating that safe environment to do that. You wouldn't do it in the middle of a meeting or a presentation. You'd probably want to take that a bit more private and offline. But listen, understand what's going on. And when you understand what's going on, then you can start to give conversation around what maybe they could do. So yeah, we need to flush out a few of those ideas. You know, in when we train, we talk about this thing called approach, assess, and assist. The problem we have with most of our ways of working is we approach somebody who's struggling and we give them a load of solutions. Yeah, and we don't put it in the middle, and that's the yeah. piece that lots of people struggle with. Managers haven't been trained in it; they don't understand what to say, so they're worried, and it's difficult. It's difficult to have those conversations. So should companies um, set out a guideline if someone's struggling from with their mental health? Should they have a place that they can go to or a, a set person they can speak to? What what should companies be doing on, on a bigger scale? Yeah, sorry. sorry about that. Um, so, so for me, I think the reality is that you know lots of companies are doing things already. There are there no there's no mandatory requirements right now as we speak yeah. in the session. You know, at the end of September. 
no mandatory requirements to have things like mental health first aiders in place yet there is under the health and safety act to have physical first aiders so psychological first aid so you know companies are now starting to invest in that as you know finding people within your organization who are comfortable and willing to learn more skills to upskill and provide that level of support now what i would make very clear if for anybody that might be listening that's thinking about engaging with mental health first aid is that's not the only solution it's not the solution it's part of a program of things that you can do now there's plenty of awareness days out there that companies can get involved with we see more of that anyway yeah mental health awareness week we had suicide prevention day in uh, beginning of september we've got world mental health day coming up in in a couple of weeks time in october and it's important that companies get behind those because yes they are a bit tiring sometimes we've had a, an awareness day for everything of course but it is an important moment to just stop and reflect on what's happening what's going to happen and where we're heading to you know so yeah. lots of things companies can do there are so many programs but doing something is a really positive step yeah nothing is not going to help people don't want to join businesses today this is a fact where they don't feel supported they don't feel that their boss is listening and they don't feel that they have a, a chance to thrive and do the things that they would love to be doing in those roles so companies are going to struggle to find people to to recruit and to retain people who, who are in the business already so yeah um over the last year and a half obviously we've been in lockdown things have changed people have changed moods have changed yeah. what have been your biggest learnings over the last year and throughout this um my biggest learnings well i'm i'm not, I'm, I'm a hugger so i've <laughs> not hug people um, which is hard because it's a habit that's been undone um, i don't know how i'm going to feel when i see lots of people next but um yeah no learnings i think i think the world has become a closer place in many ways but also mm. a disconnected place in others you know i think of community i've i've loved the community where i live we've got to know each other we never really knew each other yet we yeah lived 10 years prior to you know the covid pandemic and and then we got to know our neighbors and we've become friends and we do things together and and they're people who live just next to us. They're not my friends who live overseas or live you know, miles away. These are local communities. And I found that really fascinating how that sort of came together and you know, applauding the NHS or whatever. But from a work perspective, this, there's been a demand increase, of course, for talking about mental health. And I think that's a really good thing. My frustration of it was that lots of companies, because of the element of surprise that happened in March of we're not sure what's going to happen. We don't know how long this is going to be for. We don't know how long fur furlough is going to be. They didn't do anything then. Yeah. A long time. And I see that right now. A lot of companies did leave it for far too long before they started to say, oh, yeah, we should really think about the impact of people's mental health or their well-being. Yeah. And so I think that's a big frustration that I've got, which is it should have been done quicker. Of yeah. course, when the, when, the, when the pennies are tight and it's difficult to find funds, you know, people aren't going to be investing in these softer things but I think it's quite a necessary thing to help people now you know I love the fact that I can talk to big groups of people about mental health in a in a way that I've never been able to speak openly about previously and I know you mentioned it a little bit earlier but it gives people a bit of a sight into the real world of mental health and it's yeah. not bad the problem is so many people still think it is a negative it's a bad thing and it's shouldn't talk about it you know it's a dark art and it's not at yeah. all it's yeah a thing we all I know. we do you know yeah. i want you to be happier more than how unhappy you know and yeah so, absolutely i i've always been very open with um my mental health and some of the posts that i've put on linkedin when i've been completely honest so when i had covid and i came out of that struggle um i had more support than any other post um so yeah. it it really is true um just moving into the last question uh, there's a lot of people that have been going through um tough times um if somebody is really struggling with their mental health and they you know they don't want to sort of um reach out to someone at work or are there any tips of how they can make themselves feel better you know what it's, it's not an easy question, that one, because it's it, it's loaded into everyone's an individual. Everybody's got different ways of dealing with things. You know, I, I, I talk to lots of people in the work that I do. And, you know, I've, I've trained thousands of people in in the different training products. Everyone has a very unique perspective on their experience of mental health. 
Now, for anybody that's listening that is feeling vulnerable, worried, concerned about talking, please know, and I really want to share that with you, please know that it is okay to talk about these things. It really is. You know, I post openly about my experiences, my journey with mental health, and my introduction earlier was only about me, and it was only about my journey. I also have a daughter who is very unwell mentally. She's in hospital, and we struggle with that. And, you know, even the weekend prior to recording this, I was away and I actually was very upset. I was crying and opening up to friends, you know, to my mates about my mental health and, and how I felt, really felt. And and I didn't feel that that was a bad thing to do. And none of them judged me or ridiculed me or said anything negative. They were all really supportive. And, you know, I, I definitely got a couple of hugs out of that one. So, you know, but but the reality is vulnerability is actually a strength. Yeah. So having the ability to say I'm struggling when, you know, you feel that vulnerability and you will feel it. I'm not, not saying I can get rid of that, but knowing, being safe in the knowledge that when you say something like that, when you say I'm struggling or I just need some help, people will listen. People will take notice of that. And very few people will really feel that. We're not trolls on Twitter. You know, don't put it on Twitter if you feel that people are going to troll it. And I've never, personally, I've never experienced any trolling through social media because I've been open publicly. The only thing I've ever seen is really the outpouring of support. Yeah. And that's amazing. And it makes you feel connected. My podcast, you know, I just want to touch on that. Just one thing as a thought. I've spoken to, you know, well over 100 people now on that podcast. Every single person in there has their own personal journey with mental health. And some of those are really very extreme. Some of them are not so extreme. Some interpret in different ways. And that's perfectly OK. I have zero issues with those. The reality is there's something for everybody in there. There are conversations about every disorder that you can imagine. There are things that people have been through that others connect to. And the feedback that I've had from that is people connect to some of those stories. And that's amazing because now it means if they were sat there alone, and I can give you an example, a friend of mine struggles with anxiety and there was a podcast recording with one of those, uh, one, one of the guests on there. And, and this guest made a comment. And I think this is such an important part of all of this. And my friend had come back and said, and she'd asked me a question. I didn't answer it. And then eventually she'd come back and she said, I found the answer. And I thought, that's strange. Where did you find this answer? This like magical solution. And she said, I heard Sharon and Eja say, mental health is not a straight line. And she found the answer because it was then that point of acceptance of mental health goes left, right, up, down, backwards, forwards. And it's okay to have that happening. It's not okay that you're constantly rolling backwards. And it's really important that we understand that. Some days are gonna be really difficult. I genuinely know that. Some days are gonna be amazing and that's brilliant. So we want more amazing days than we want those bad days. And when we have more amazing days, we, leave a, we lead a really good life. That's ultimately what we want. Yeah. Life is a series of extraordinary events, apparently. Isn't um, it? <laughs> let's make sure the positive ones say that's the big thing, isn't it? But it's so true and we, we forget that life's a, life's a valuable thing and time is such a commodity that we waste so freely. And, oh, yeah, I could talk about time forever. But I know. And I'm I could. Listen, you got time for it. I could listen to you and go on for hours. I really, really could. And actually, I listened to one of your podcasts um, earlier today and it was brilliant. And I definitely will, will tag the link to it. Um, Matthew, thank you, Matt. Thank That's you so much. Um, Thank you for sharing your story and opening up and giving tips and it's going to be so valuable and I know people will come and connect with you on LinkedIn and follow you on LinkedIn and um, follow your journey and your story and I really appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you and I will give you a hug. <laughs> oh I love it yeah I'm t and I will take the hug so yeah, yeah don't worry we'll, we'll both hug then. Um, Good. And stuff. Sam thank you so much I really appreciate Bye. it thank you for everything you're doing as well around the sustainability talks and yeah you're doing because it's just amazing and you're an incredible as i always say you're an amazing human um keep on being an amazing human and i'll see you very soon if not tomorrow at the business travel <laughs> absolutely oh, take care bye-bye